And what do you do now? So now I mostly do uh, yacht delivery. <laughs> yacht delivery? Yeah, sailboats. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so, was that, like, how did that go, come about? So there's a story there. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, let me organize this real quick in my head. It, like 2014, like, okay, so I'd finished my undergrad. Um, I was now holder of an Ivy League degree, like much to my chagrin. And I went through a, a, a personal crisis that was, was pretty bad. Um, it, uh, it was almost up there with like the Soundgarden personal crisis. Um, and so I kind of did a, a similar thing where it's like, okay, I need to take some time off, you know, to do um, some work on myself, you know. And so how that translated was I'd always been really interested in Argentina as a, as a country and as a place. So I, I got a flat in, in Buenos Aires and went and lived there for a couple months and hmm. kind of did this uh, deep period of introspection. But during this time, um, before I left, a, a good friend of mine suggested this book called Dove, written by a man named Robin Lee Graham. And so he's like, he's like, hey, I just read this book. You should read it. I think you'd really dig it. And uh, I didn't even know what it was about. So um, I found a used copy and took it with me down there and read it. And so it's it's the story. I don't know if you've even heard of this, this story of Robin no. Graham. But he did, I think he started in 1967. He did a, a solo circumnavigation in a sailboat. That took him about five years to do, but he, at the time, he was the youngest person to ever do that. He started when he was like 15, and it was, it was like, it got a lot of press, like National Geographic covered it. I think he's been on the cover of National Geographic like three times. Hmm. And so it's an interesting account, his solo circumnavigation, um, took him five years. Uh, along the way, he met the, this woman, Patty, like, the, like this, this young you know, pretty hippie chick, like somewhere in the South Pacific. And they fell in love and like got married. And she would kind of meet him in different spots as he finished the circumnavigation. And then the book ends, um, he returns to Los Angeles, uh, circumnavigation complete. Um, and I'm, I'm like super cynical, like going, okay, what happened now? You know? And I'm like, I bet that marriage didn't last, you know? Cause I, after something, I, I guess I equated it to like a, a war zone romance or something, you know, mm. where you're kind of in this super heightened environment. So if you bring it back to just normal life, like, does it survive? Like is like what made it interesting or exciting or whatever, you know, do, do you kind of get back to reality and it's like, eh, you know, you're not that interesting or whatever. <laughs> right. Um, so, yeah, I'm super cynical. Like, pff, that marriage didn't last, whatever. So, but then I started doing some internet research on, on Robin Graham. And turns out he wrote, like, a second book um, called um, the, the Sailor Returns from the Sea or something like that. So, what, what had happened, um, and he, he did go through kind of a dark period after the circumnavigation. Um that I, I won't get into but he told me about it personally so he, he and patty in like the early 1970s so they get back from like five years you know sailing the world basically um it's pre-internet pre the the communication that we have now so obviously 1965 to 1970 was a pretty turbulent period in like american history and so robin essentially missed all that and he gets back to the states and was it a stanford i think stanford offered him a, like a full ride scholarship so he went for a semester and basically couldn't deal with all these lefty professors and like I, i'm out of here and so he and patty loaded up uh like bought like a mail truck i think loaded up all their stuff and and went to montana and homesteaded in montana like super old school like 19th century homestead wow and so you know, I'm doing this research, and it's like, oh, Kalispell, Montana. Um, my buddy Mike from Ranger Battalion lives in Kalispell, Montana. So I'm in my flat in, in Buenos Aires, and I email Mike. I'm like, hey, dude, did, you know a guy in Kalispell named Robin Graham? Like 30 minutes later, I get an email. It's like, yeah, I saw him in Costco yesterday. And it's like, <laughs> no fucking way. And so, hey, can you can you do like an email introduction for me? And he's like, yeah. And so... Uh, 
you know, fast forward to today, um, I'm very happy and proud to call Robin and Patty friends, you know, like uh, amazing human beings, like so cool. And so the sailing thing, to bring it back, like reading Dove and like getting to know Robin and stuff, I started getting interested in, in sailing. And like, I, I you know, I, I live in Western Washington on Puget Sound. Like it's a, it's a very nautical culture. And I, I've worked on boats in Alaska and actually come from kind of a nautical family on my father's side. Like they all worked on tugboats and on the Columbia River. Um, like uh, my grandfather, my dad, my uncles. Um, my dad was a commercial fisherman in Alaska, like ran his own boat for decades. And so it seemed like kind of a natural thing. Like I've always been attracted to boats in the water. So I started started looking, you know, did the practical thing, started looking for a sailboat. And I, I found one for sale that was about 10 miles from my house, but I knew nothing about sailboats. So I'm like pinging people I know who do know stuff about sailboats. I'm like, hey, is this boat any good? You know, let, you know, look at the pictures, look at the, the year and the design and everything. So it was a, a 1986 Jeannot Sunrise 34 sloop. And like all these people like, yeah, it's a good boat. It's a good boat. Like, yeah, and the, the price is right. So I'm, I'm watching it and the price kept dropping and kept dropping. And then it got low enough where it's like, it was kind of in my realm. So I contacted the broker and like actually went down and looked at the boat, like did, did a walkthrough. And I was like, so it's, is the seller taking offers on this? And he's just like, yeah, make one. And so I went, I had some deployment money saved up and I had, I, I could pile up about 17 grand and so at the time. So I offered 17,000 and like half hour later, it's like, you got a boat. Wow. So um, that, that was the beginning of my, my personal, you know, sailing ad adventures. Did you live on it? Nope. My folks did that for a while. <clears throat> when they retired, um, my mom and my stepdad decided to live on a sailboat. They flew around the Keys. And they went down to the Bahamas. They mm -hmm. just decided to just live on a boat for a while until my mom got bored with it. Yeah. My mom was like, well, let's go to a fucking place. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> but I think it was a, a very um, educational and uh, an enlightening experience to just live in nature on the ocean for a while. You know, that's very, uh, that's a, you know, wanderlust appeal to a lot of people to just get on a boat and live on a boat and wake up and have coffee on the ocean, mm -hmm. just exist out there. 